Yes. Okay. Hello and welcome. Today we've got Catherine Edwards with us today um, and we will be discussing how to develop your intuition and also how to connect with your intuition um, much more easily. Um, so just before we begin, I would like you all to subscribe to my Telegram channel and also to nicholasveniamin.com or nickven.com where I'll be, um, um, you know, building my new platform. Um, and also if you're watching this for the first time on YouTube, I will leave the link below in the description for the full interview. Catherine, how are you? I'm great. I'm great today. Thank you. I am in my little office. I've got four out of my five cats sitting in here with us listening into the conversation. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm good. I think probably like everyone else, a bit up and down. You know, you have good days and bad days. And um, for me personally, it sort of links into a lot of what my expectations are. If I've got an expectation around a certain date or event coming in and that doesn't happen, it can drop my energy and my mood down quite quickly. But when I focus in on getting on with my own life and just watch and observe what's happening, then um, things go a lot better generally. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, I wanted to ask you though, Nick, just before we really get started, I'm really intrigued in terms of, because I've obviously listened to your story a bit and sort of seen that you've been awake, so to speak, or aware of what's going on for quite a long while. How did, how did that come about for you? Because you, you were saying since about 18, is it, that you were aware that things were not all as they seemed? So um, I, I was 18 years old um, and um, someone, it was my ex-girlfriend actually at the time, she sent me a, a video of, because I was very into the music industry back then, and um, she sent me a um, a video of lots of singers doing the all-seeing eye with their hands and and the one eye and the six 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 signs and 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 then we had and then we had Tupac singing about the Illuminati and singing against them and you know you've got Michael Jackson they don't care about us and you've got lots of rappers that you know um, discreetly put their lyrics talking about the occult and you know you can't control me and selling my soul for a happy meal and all, all of these things you know so um and and, and it just started opening I start I was just very open-minded and, and I was very interested I, you know it resonated with me in the sense that that um my intuition was right about telling me that there is something going on here it's not a coincidence that all of these artists are all doing the pyramid symbols or the 666 or covering one eye and and then you've got you know if you listen to the lyrics like Britney Spears I'm a slave for you I cannot deny it I cannot control it and then you've got songs that are being censored like they don't care about us um, by Michael Jackson um so yeah so then I started going on to I started in the music industry and then I started doing more uh, research with uh, human sex trafficking and which I was about in my early 20s I found that out um, and then I um, came across a few interviews of ex-Illuminati members who were talking about that and they were brought up with it and to them it was a normal thing um, when they were nine ten years old and they were always repeatedly told that they were special I don't know if it was some kind of brainwashing thing I don't know mm. um, and then um, I started learning more about, um, um, you know, the, the banking system and the Federal Reserve. And then when I came across David Icke, um, everyone thought he was crazy. But to me, it was like, oh, there's a normal guy, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a normal guy. Finally, someone's speaking, you know, something nobody speaks about, you know, um, it just all made sense with you know, Twin Towers and, mm. you know, and then Michael Jackson made a few statements about, you know, these people, they don't care about, you know, all they care about is cars and lovely big houses and money and, you know, the, 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 the tabloids or the press, he always kept saying they are horrible people. And then you've got Donald Trump saying today that they are the enemy of the people. And it just makes sense. You know, it does make sense. I mean, the, the person that controls the mainstream media also owns the, or, or, or if you like the person that owns the mainstream media also own the opinions of the masses. And if you had that tool, that power, why not? So it makes sense. You know, what do you think? 
Yeah, I'm 100% with you on that. And it's really interesting. I find it fascinating to see how people sort of did wake up. I mean, I'm a biologist and I've always been into natural health care for humans and animals. And the more I started getting into that, the more I realised how everything in terms of natural remedies and natural treatments were completely censored. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of my friends who did biology with me at uni ended up going into the pharmaceutical industry. And you could see this divergence of brainwashing. They probably think I was brainwashed in one direction. I was thinking them in another direction. And, you know, it was just completely ridiculous that things that we've known for thousands of years are good for the body, you're not allowed to say. So I can't put on my website that milk thistle is good for the liver, even though there's loads of remedy, loads of, you know, scientific evidence showing that because it's not a pharmaceutical product. And then when I had children, I was just absolutely horrified about, I, you know, I had children. I was pretty aware on things like the vaccine issue because... Luckily, my mother had always been very into animals and animal health as well. So she was quite aware about the issues with vaccines with animals. But when I literally saw how you, it was impossible as a parent to get any objective advice on such issues as this, then you start thinking, hang on a minute, you know, there's something really wrong here. And then when you start seeing the links between the pharmaceutical industry, the media, the education system, you name it, 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 all the dominoes start to fall into place. But of course, like many of us, everyone thinks you're mad because a lot of people don't believe that there could be an evil agenda behind a lot of, behind all this. That's what it is. People can't get their heads around the no. fact that the, our authorities that we've trusted for so long um, are the corrupt ones. They're the criminals. They're the gangsters, you know. And um, when I was eighteen and I and I started learning all this, mm. I I I thought, oh, that that dot connects to that dot. Oh yeah, I see how that works. Oh yeah, that's well, that's not a coincidence. Well, it's obvious, you know. And, and then one thing led to another, and I but I kept doing the research, and I wasn't believing everything that I was you know, that I was reading, but I was believing what I saw connected. For an example, you know, I, I would see a person who's who has his fingers in certain businesses and they're registered paedophiles. And, you know, why not? Wouldn't it be great for a paedophile who likes children to, to be in charge of a care home full of children? I mean, it's not a coincidence. So when you look at everything and the dots connect, it was very easy for me to think, okay, yeah, that, I can understand that. That That's obvious, yeah. But then when I show it to my family, um, they think I'm just crazy. They can't put the dots together. They, they don't have the ability to, okay? And um, it's, it's, you know, they you're right. We are the crazy ones because all the people, all the philosophers that have said in the past, the crazy ones will speak the truth, and the normal people or the normal people um, will um, be brainwashed. And that's the way society is going. And that's where we are at this point. So the philosophers back then um, knew exactly what they were speaking about. They knew what we were going into. Yeah, you know, it's so important. And once once you see something, you know, once Wayne Dyer said, once you change the look, the way you look at things, the things you look at change and nothing's true, because once you see these, you can't stop seeing the connections everywhere, can you? And I think what's really frightening is most people they have no idea just how long we've all been brainwashed. So I've had a very, very career. I've, I've worked in lots of different industries. I've worked in environmental management when I was really looking at uh, water pollution and that, that was going back 30 years. And I was absolutely horrified then, you know, if most people in England believe, knew what was in our drinking water and how it was poisoning us in various different ways, they'd be horrified because they think just because you don't get chlor uh, um, cholera from it, it's clean, it's not. And then I worked in the telecom industry and looking at obviously, you know, EMF and everything there. Then I worked in, you know, doing lots of project management. So I had a stint project managing for the NHS and I could see literally how corrupt the data reporting systems were. I mean, I literally couldn't believe it that, uh, you know, something so respected in British culture could be operating the way it was. And when you do start connecting all these dogs and adults, and then you start looking at the education system and what we've all been taught, 
and then the computer games and this obsession with the youngsters to get online and social media, most people are bombarded from so many different directions, they have no idea. And the way I like to explain to people, it's like, if you go and spend a year, like when I, after I left uni, I went traveling around the world, you know, by the time you spent a year in Australia, you come back and you've got an Australian tang to your accent. And you don't notice it because subconsciously you're picking up what you're hearing in your environment. But the people that pick you up from the airport notice it straight away because you sound different to what you did when you went. And <laughs> I think because these changes are so subtle, we don't notice them themselves. And working in natural health, we're just being bombarded in our food, in our air, in our water, with the EMFs, with the media, with the subliminal programming. And no wonder most people have no idea that this is happening. Um, and unfortunately, until most people, until something terrible happens out in their life, often an illness or something, they don't start questioning things. And then when something hits rock bottom in their lives, a lot of people start questioning things. But I'm so lucky. I've always grown up by loads of animals. I've got loads of animals now and I work with animals and animals are so in tune with their intuition, even mm -hmm. those of us that live, those that live in a human environment with us. And they can sense things. They've still got that innate ability to sense what's going on in their environment because it's just our main survival instinct. But this agenda has worked really hard to take humans away from using that intuitive knowledge that we all have. You know, you ask your child, a young child, um, you know, a two or three year old, um, any question about things, they can, they can tune into things straight away. You know, most children think that they can talk to animals. Um, they're very aware of what's going on in nature. They pick up on um, you know, what's going on with the humans around them and everything. But by the time we, as we get older, we have a lot of that ability knocked out of us because we're taught what we're meant to think, how we're meant to behave, what our expectations are. And I think this last year has been a brilliant way to sort of connect us back into questioning everything because it's taken a lot of people out of their normal routine, which has been very difficult for a lot of people, hasn't it? <clears throat> Definitely. I think I think that um, the people that are not awake now, I still believe that there's time for them to wake up. But I, I, I do believe that there are a huge amount of people that they won't wake up. Yeah. And if if they woke up, I think it will be so bad for them that they would become ill and they would probably end up dying. I mean, that's what I think, because they just they, they are so living in a in a very different timeline the way they see the world i think someone like us who are who are awake we see the world in a certain way mm -hmm. but those people who are asleep the really the, the ones who are in a coma i think that their perspective and their outlook on the world is so different that i think that it would surprise us and it's so oblivious. It's so they think it's we live in 2021. This world is so honest and so great. We've 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 got everything sorted now. You know, we've we've gone through the dark ages. They, they think that we're at that point, you know, and it, it's surprising. It, it, it's really, really surprising. You know, it's overwhelming, should I say? I think that's what I you know want to say. So wh what do you have to uh, say to the listeners? in respect to helping them develop more of their intuition? Yeah, that's a really good point. And it's something that I think that is so important for all of us, whatever your beliefs are. Um, because if you, if you start to trust yourself more, you get less affected by those around you and you can start making decisions that are better for you as an individual. So all the things are really, really simple. So the number one thing I would say is get away from your screen and get out in nature. So wherever you live, when you get out in nature, whether it's your local park, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to get to the beach or into the woods, focusing in on what you're seeing there and actually what's real in front of you and connecting in to basically the life force that, that keeps us all going, you know, the fresh air, the clean air, connect, if you can take your shoes off and be barefoot on the soil, that is amazing because most of us have lost 
all connection with the earth. That's why they call it grounding or earthing is so important to people. So I think there's so much that people can do that's free of charge. So getting out to nature is really, really important. If you're lucky enough to have animals in your life, actually taking time to stop and look at them. So I'm sitting here right next door to me, just out of view is one of my cats. And he's completely relaxed. He's completely fast asleep. But if some bit of danger came in, he'd be awake straight away and reacting to it. So actually learning from the way animals respond, whether they're domesticated animals or wild animals, can really take us back to um, trusting ourselves and trusting our intuition. So anyone, a lot of people have got pet dogs, for example. And a pet dog, every time you take it to a park or out for a walk, it's full of the joys. It really mm. knows how to enjoy that moment. Your dog, when you're walking it, isn't thinking, you know, I wonder what I've got to do next. I've wondered what, you know, wonder what work I've got to do, what shopping I get to go. He's just thinking how amazing I'm out on a walk. And he's reacting to every other dog, every squirrel, every other person. He's reacting to those on face value without any assumptions. And what they're actually doing is they're reading that other animal, whether it's a human or another animal's energy field. As humans, we jump into judgment very, very quickly. We, we assume when we see someone, we immediately make a lot of judgments to them. But if we can actually stop and listen to those people or listen to nature or watch what our dogs are doing, suddenly it takes us right back into our heart center and our gut and takes us away from the thinking part of our brain because the thinking part of the brain has obviously got some very important uses but mm -hmm. as humans we tend to overuse it um so surrounding yourself you know getting in contact with animals getting in contact with nature children children are a wonderful wonderful way to connect back into your intuition and in our society, we, you know, we often get told, you know, children should be seen and not heard. And, you know, obviously you must respect your elders and listen to them and the parents always know best. But in a lot of cultures, that's not the same. Yes, there's that respect there. But a lot of cultures, children are allowed to actually be children mm -hmm. and explore and learn through their own exploration rather than be programmed down a certain reaction. So, you know, most people know children, that a lot of children will always ask why, 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 why? Any parent will identify with that, that all child goes through a stage where they're always asking why about everything. And a lot of people can see that as annoying, but if we as adults just keep that questioning mind, mm -hmm. then suddenly, even if we can't explain it, if we just keep questioning what we're seeing, what we're smelling, what we're feeling, um, what we're being told, what we're actually, you know, just take the pandemic, you know, are you walking out on the streets and seeing people drop dead? No, absolutely. No. Does do the laws make any sense? So that question in mind of why, why, why? I bet anyone who's got children, I bet they've been asking, why do you have to wear that mask? why do you have to do this? You know, you wouldn't let your child put a paper bag over their head. Mm -hmm. They might suffocate, but you might make them make a ask. So a few simple things of keeping that opening inquiring mind and not jumping into a judgment too quickly and getting out in nature. And we can go into a lot more detail about breathing, meditation, etc. But things that aren't too big a step for most people, you know, what are you actually seeing? Tuning in with your senses again, what are you seeing with your own eyes? It's a bit like, you know, I'm gonna be really unpolitically correct here, but if I wanna get fit, I'm not gonna choose a fat aerobics teacher. You know, if someone's a fitness instructor, I expect them to look fit. It's just your natural instincts, what you know, what you're looking for, because you want to that person that you're looking up to as a role model who's training you, you, you want to look at them at the same time because you're going to get motivated because that's the person that's pushing you. Absolutely. So, you know, if you're looking at someone who's giving you health advice, you know, OK, we're very programmed to accept everything our doctors or vets tell us. But, you know, does your doctor look healthy? You know, it's a, bit, it's a bit like going to the restaurant. You want your food to look nice on the menu before you order it you know yeah, completely you want it to look nice on the menu 
and you want the people working in the restaurant to look fit and healthy and clean. Hygienic, absolutely. And hygienic. So it's a bit like we've, again, this, this political correctness has made people nervous to question things. So, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people, the rise in chronic illness within in the UK, in Scotland, in America, you know, we're the unhit, unfittest generations there have ever been. Um, if you look at pet health, you know, at the turn of the century, it was normal for dogs to live to 20. Now, if you've got a dog that's 12, everyone thinks that's old. We're accepting such a low standard of health and wellness. Um, everyone accepts now that, you know, mental illness is rife. But it doesn't have to be like that. You know, I was lucky enough to spend some time working out in Zambia with rescued elephants. And I'll tell you what, the, the keepers, the Zambians working out there, I learned more from two weeks with them than I probably did in my whole degree because they are living connected with nature. I've never seen people so connected with their environment. They were the fittest, healthiest people I've ever seen, even though they had no access to health care because they couldn't eat fast food. They couldn't eat junk food. They had to eat fresh food because they couldn't afford all the junk that was in the supermarkets. And the way we've been taught to live in modern life, you know, unfortunately, most of the stuff that you go when you see when you go around the supermarket is complete junk. It's not going to put you in a healthy state. And if you're physically unhealthy, it will affect your mental state and vice versa. Um, so really, I think really getting back to basics, you know, a lot of people have had a lot of their routine taken out of them. And certainly in the UK, most people are work used to working. I don't think it's nine to five anymore. I don't really know any people that work nine to five before the pandemic. It was always more like eight till six or seven o'clock. Mm. And there's no time for living. But, you know, people are now have even those that, you know, I've been working the whole way through. But a lot of people, because they've been taken out of their normal routine, are starting to really question what normal they want to now create and what do they want to go forward to? Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, you know, some of the matrix has has been dismantled. And that's what you were saying, the nine to five system that everyone, you know, that belief system that they have about work and career, that's been taken down, if you think about it. And now we have to think more proactively. We have to use our initiative and think, well, how can we make money from home or, you know, you know, work for the same company for, you know, at, from home? And you, did you see what I mean? Yeah, completely. And I think this whole culture, you know, in the, in the Western culture, we've got this, a lot of people, I mean, I've never subscribed to it, but a lot of people get an important job, work hard, and look forward to their retirement. Absolutely, yeah, you yeah, know, definitely. Don't see anyone in Africa doing that, you know, why, why, if you're happy with your life, would you want to retire? You know, why, it's like people that live for their one holiday a year, you know, fundamentally, there's something wrong with your day-to-day -day life. There's nothing wrong with, with having these amazing experiences to supplement, but actually about making your day-to-day -day life really worthwhile. And because, you know, particularly in, in the sort of the aware community, you know, a lot of people are going back to talking about growing their own vegetables. A lot of people are talking about looking at water and energy and community spirit again. Mm. And community spirit had almost been frowned upon. When I was a child, all the parents used to help each other out. So because they didn't have the big, it was so long ago that I was a child. But, you know, that, you know, one of the mums would look after the kids whilst the other one went and did their shopping and things like that. But in this, when I had my children, no one would do anything unless you paid them. You could pay a childminder, but they were, everyone was too busy to help anyone. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, why should we retire if we like what we do? Um, exactly. What, absolutely. And I think everyone, you know, if you're, if you're not happy with your job, ask yourself within you know, what makes me happy and follow that and the money will fall. It will look after you. You know, the other day I, I've got a, um, a WhatsApp group with my family and my brother's on there as well. My brother is the only one that's awake. And my cousin sent a, um, a, a petition for everyone to sign. And the petition was to, um, you know, to create another bank holiday, an extra bank holiday in the UK and um, me and my brother now have a private joke I say I says to him when you're doing what you love you don't sign petitions 
for bank holidays, you know, and it's the same thing. Exactly, because it's a passion, a vocation, and also hopefully sort of giving back and contributing. So one of the things I've liked about you know, this little little truth of community I've been in, we've all been sharing information between us. We've all been sharing research. So everyone will have their different specialities. So my speciality is on the health side of things. And, you know, I've been studying, for example, vaccines for year, more years than I care to remember. But I'm absolutely hopeless on the financial side of things. So I would go and defer to other people that are where their expertise is on the financial side of things. So you don't, you've all got your own special gifts, but most of us, you know, many adults, when you say, what would you really like to do? If you could just, if, you know, it was a blank piece of paper, what would you really like to do? For a lot of adults, they can't even go there. They don't even know what to say. But if you ask a seven-year-old what they want to do, they'll come up with an answer like that. And there's no judgment in their answer. So if one of them says that they want to be a gardener and one wants to be a dustman and one wants to be a doctor and one wants to be a politician, the seven-year-olds don't start judging each other that one of those is better or worse than the other. Mm, it's but true. That it's about how they feel about it. How they feel and what resonates with them because it would be absolutely useless if we were all good at the same things. I mean, we have. I've got two sisters. They're very, very different to me. Um, I hate doing housework and decorating. <laughs> I want to be outside with the animals. I'm happy mucking out stables all day. I'm happy walking and walking dogs, walking horses, riding horses. Get me outside in the wind and rain, in the mud. I'm happy as yeah. anything. I've got a twin sister who absolutely hates that, but she's absolutely brilliant at housework and decorating. Well, if we, if you all lived in a commune, you'd have some people that love cooking, some people like doing the vegetable patch, some people that will raise the animals, some people that are really good at mending and building. And that's the whole point. We've all got our own unique gifts, but most of us don't live our life using those. Most of us do what we're told we have to do, what we think we have to do. But actually, I think now's the time where people have been forced to relook at what they're doing for lots of different reasons and start to create their own reality. And I'm certainly a really strong believer that you really can create your own reality. I mean, I- Absolutely, you can, yeah. You just gotta look within and listen to your gut. You know, does this feel right or does that feel right? And, and try to, um, and this is what I try to do. I try to acknowledge, is this the ego or is it really what I want? Actually, no, it's not this, the ego is telling me this. I mean, the ego was telling me carry on with the law degree. Yeah. And my gut was telling me, forget the law degree, follow what you believe in. And this was, and what I'm doing right now is what I believe in, you know. And what, what do you think gave you the courage to do that? Because, you know, you must have had probably, were there members of your family that didn't support that? Uh, a lot of the members of my family really wanted me to continue with law. So yeah. I had to say to them in, a, in, a, in another way, I had to say, look, I'm suspending one one year of my law degree, I said, because of the COVID restrictions. So it could, you know, hit them nice and slowly. <laughs> That's, a good idea. That's a good idea. You know, and then I could do this. And then, you know, and now they, they know, they, you know, they know that it's corrupt and, you know, they're awake. But they can also see that that um, I'm really enjoying my interviews. I'm learning a lot and um, lots of people enjoy it. And I get more pleasure out of that than wanting to feed my ego, knowing the law and going to make people's lives hell in the in the, in a you know in a court of law, you know. So that's, that's not really what I want, you know. Especially yeah, I mean, in a time like this, that everything's being dismantled. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's such a good example, and so good that you had the courage to follow through with that and think, no, I'm going to actually do it, and you know, broke those around you into it gently, but you know, actually said, no, I'm going to live my life. And, and you can tell, can't you? You can tell, you just know when you're doing something you're passionate about. I gave up a really, really highly paid, important sounding job. Um, and I didn't hate the job. I mean, I've actually never hated any of my jobs because if anything, if I didn't like it, I'd just choose something else. So I've never been in a position where I've stayed in a job where I haven't liked it. I've always got something out of it. But a lot of them, I've always known I was there to learn some certain skills and then leave it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But when I gave up my really highly, really important sounding job and went off to be an equine iridologist, well, there weren't any other people in the UK. So that is looking into the eyes of horses to pick up health issues and then treat them herbally. 
And everyone thought I was completely mad because they said, you can't do this. There isn't a career that says equine iridologist, you know, and how are you going to make, and no one's going to know anything about it and you'll never make any money out of this and you'll never be able to do that. But because I was so passionate about it, it really worked. And it mm. was amazing because I was doing something that one, I 100% believed in and was really authentic about. And also because I knew how many sort of people and their horses that I could help. It was fantastic. So, you know, just showing that, you know, really anything's possible, even if you're just rewriting the rule book. Absolutely. I really think that people should just follow their hearts and their intuition. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks of you. I don't worry about it. I've I never worry about it, and I'm really quite independent. So, I, I I just do what my heart says, and it makes me happy. And that's what it will make everyone happy if they followed what they want to follow and what's really in their hearts and what you know the, you know completes them. Not the ego, but more the intuition of you know fulfilling your mission, if you like. Absolutely, and I think also one of the things that you know I've learned more and more as I got older. You know, there is that saying that you know, you become a, a product of the 10 people that you really surround yourself with most of the time. And I think that's really true. I'm lucky that five of those are cats, three are dogs, three are horses, three are guinea pigs. So I've got a tail. Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, actually, because a lot of people are getting very depressed at the moment because they're the odd one out in their family and they're the only one that thinks how they do. But that is the beauty of online stuff. You can connect with people that uplift you and, you know, make you feel like you're not mad. And yes, you are right to follow what you're, you're believing about this. And I think also there's a lot of sort of snobbery in the UK that, particularly in the scientific community, that if you can't recite research papers and prove it, it can't be right. But that's not what science is all about. Science is always coming up about a hypothesis and then you try and prove whether it's right or not. So again, it comes back to that questioning, not being afraid to question things, even if you don't know the answer and especially if you don't know the answer. Absolutely. I mean, I just want people to know because you made the very important point that people are depressed in a time like this. They feel that they're alone. Um, and I, I want people to know that we're in the same position. Mm. I'm in the same position as you. I, I, yes, I do feel down sometimes. Um, it, it, it um, you know, lifts me up when I have these interviews and I love it, it keeps me busy. Um, but I don't speak to my extended family. Okay, I'm lucky I have my mom and dad because they're more open-minded and, you know, and my brother. But other than that, all my extended family, all my friends, I'm not close with them anymore at all. You know, and the only people that I have that I communicate with are people like Charlie Ward on it. I speak to him quite often. I speak to the people around him and my team and I've met everyone online and we've become family. So I'm in the same position as you guys and we're all in this together. So if you feel down, just remember we're in the same position, you know, and um, I'm just lucky that I'm making these interviews and I get to learn like you and I get to share the videos and that brings me peace and pleasure that I'm doing these interviews and asking the questions that we're all, you know, we all, we all want to know answers for, you know. It's such a good point, yeah. Ways. It really is a such a good point because, sorry, I'm just going to shut the blind because the beautiful sun has just come out and I can't see you at all. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, but so I hate shutting the sun out, but I literally couldn't see you at all. No, yeah, that's... that is an important thing. And, you know, I'm sure you'll be the first to admit we're all learning as we go along, you know, I mean, I, I've always been a bit of a technophobe, you know, I've sort of, um, I say that's probably not true. I've worked it out, but I don't like it. I'd rather someone else did it for me. Um, but, you know, just having the courage to connect in. And I think these platforms, you know, a lot of people ask me, why are you doing this? Why are you speaking out? Well, first and foremost, because I'm a mum and I really want to secure the best future possible for my children and for future generations. But for me, none of this was a surprise because I've been talking for years about how people treat their animals. And a lot of people, even if they think they're treating their animals really well, they're making every single decision for them. They're deciding what they eat, what they drink, who they interact with, what injections they have, what chemicals they have put on them, when they go out for exercise, when they're left on their own, if they've got companionship, and, you know, the thing is, is it's not right. It's not right. We've all seen this year 
having your liberties and your choices taken away from you without feeling that you can have a voice and the censorship has never been greater than it is now is really distressing isn't it to any intelligent being so in a way this year it's been a little bit more that I think I see some hope that people will start treating other people and other species with a little bit more respect because it's only when you start to appreciate you know experience hardship yourself that sometimes you can see things from another person or animal's point of view absolutely yeah no definitely definitely so um what what other techniques um can you share with us about human interaction and also um you know being more in touch with your intuition and building that um so the first thing i would say is get used to spending time on your own because for a lot of people it's really uncomfortable to be in silence or mm -hmm. not be surrounded. Now, obviously, if you're a mum with young children and everything, that might be limited. But even five minutes here or there, not surrounding yourself with the radio, with the TV, with our interviews, um, to actually have time to start listening in to what you're really feeling. Because distraction stops you really knowing yourself. So time, trying to have some quiet time and to ask yourself, what are you really feeling? And quite often physical symptoms don't lie. So that's why a lot of people are very in tune with their breathing. And if you start meditation or any sort of mindfulness, one of the first things people often start with is really tuning in and focusing in on their breathing. Because if you focus in on what your body's doing, it doesn't really lie. So someone can easily say, I'm not stressed at all, but their dog or their cat or their husband or their child will say differently. Mm. But if you actually tune in and start, you know, close your eyes and feel how your body's feeling. If your breathing is rapid, you're not relaxed. You're stressed in some way. If your heart rate's raised, you're not relaxed. You're stressed in some way. If you're sweating at all, that's a sign. If you're feeling uncomfortable and pains in your body, acknowledging them and what they're trying to tell you, et cetera. So I think one of the, the things is try and create some quiet time, whether it's just 10 minutes in the bath when the kids are in bed. Um, if you get a chance to go out to ideally outside and have a walk on your own, don't put a podcast on, don't listen to something, just actually ask yourself how am I feeling right now and what would I like to be doing what are my hopes for the future what one step can I make take today to create something better for myself might be as simple as making a different choice about what your next drink is going to be instead of having a tea or coffee have a glass of water or a herbal tea or something like that start small and so you're not putting pressure on yourself but look at the choices you're making and look at whether you're setting yourself up for success or failure. So we all know if you switch on the news, you're going to feel depressed. Mm -hmm. It's virtually impossible for someone to watch the news and come out feeling uplifted unless you're a psychopath. So Bill Absolutely. Gates probably does. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I don't think any normal people do. So, you know, just some simple questions about what am I doing first thing when I wake up in the morning is the first thing I do reach for my phone and check my messages. If that's the case, you're letting other people and other people's opinions drive your life. So, you know, there's a, that we could go into so much detail that we haven't got today, but, you know, a really good morning and evening routine, even if it's 10 minutes, first thing in the morning and last thing of the night of switching your social media off, switching your phone off, having a little journal where you can just write down a few things that you're grateful for, however mm -hmm. small it might even be that you know it didn't rain today or or that one of your meetings was cancelled so you actually had a bit of time to pick up a book uh, however big or small it might be it might be that you've chosen to drink a glass of water instead of a glass of wine um at what are you grateful for and how are you feeling not how are others telling you to feel how are you feeling and just being completely honest about it and it's absolutely fine if you're not feeling great but if you're not feeling great then just pick one thing that you can do either then or the next day to pick you up. Have you got a best friend you can call? Is there something uplifting that you can listen to, not scaremongering, something uplifting? Can you go and stand outside in the dark for 10 minutes and just look up at the sky? 
And these simple, natural, you know, remedies that you're talking about, these are things that we don't hear on the mainstream media. Absolutely. You know, or at school even, you know. Yeah. At school, we don't even, we're not taught this, you know. It's so, really frightening because it's very difficult for... Um, I think, you know, when, if we did, and I do know, I mean, I've got a couple of friends that are primary school teachers, and I know they are starting in some schools to teach yoga and mindfulness, etc. But I don't know whether that's continued through all this pandemic or not. But you're so right, I think just helping ourselves and reaching out and sort of asking someone, what are some simple tips that I can do for free, because all of this stuff is free. You, you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for some extensive stuff. Of course, you can do if you want some extra support from people. But just questioning some of the simple condition decisions that we're making in our life, because we all know what it's like when we have one too many drink, especially at my age, you get a hangover the next day, I can guarantee it. And it's not saying we can't go out and have fun like that, but it's just questioning, is the next thing I'm going to eat, drink, watch, the next person I'm going to speak to, are they going to lift my energy or drain it? Absolutely. And if they're right. going to drain it, having the strength to say no. And listen to your gut feeling. How does it make you feel? Does it, you know, does it feel dark or does it feel Perfect. love? You know, that's that's what we're looking at. Not depressed or happy, dark, yeah. evil or love. That's that, that's our intuition. Yeah. And I, you know, and obviously the love. You know, we always go to the love part. Yeah. But, yeah. But Catherine, it's been wonderful having you on. Um, is yeah, there anything? No, thank you. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Lovely to chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, is there anything that you would like to say to the listeners before we go? Yeah. The main thing I'd like to say is that everything's going to be OK. You know, regardless of what happens, whether Trump comes back into power, whether he doesn't or not. Um, you know, we are all going to be okay. We're going to move into a new way of doing things, which is going to actually, even though it might be a bit of tough love at the moment, is going to really help us all in the long run. And also to reach out to anyone that's struggling, however minor or major it is, to always know that there's someone there that you can reach out and get help from. Right. Okay, great. No, thank you so much. And if there's anyone that wants to contact you, then I can leave your email or in the, you know, in the description below if, if you like. It's up yeah, to you. lovely. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been fantastic, Catherine. Thank you so much. And we'll Thanks. speak again soon. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.